Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amudan Chattivel. And in this video, we are going to create an IOS test. In the previous video, we have created Android test and also we have learned about how we can do scrolling. Even though the, uh, you know, in the latest versions of APM, they have deprecated the touch action class, uh, but you know, they have used something called a sequence class, but you guys should be able to do it with, it, with your own. Maybe if time permits, I will also cover that at the end. But, but in this particular video, I will predominantly covering on the how uh, you know how we can create iOS test, right? And we'll also see uh, how we can create locators for iOS, right? So that's pretty much for this video. Um, so basically I have an app here. Uh, you could always find this app uh, in my GitHub repository. I will push the code. Uh, you can just search Abu Dhabi GitHub and then search for master framework, right? Uh, so this is a very simple iOS test that I want to create. And then app looks something uh, like this. So this, this is the app. So basically we need to launch this app and then we just need to go here, uh, perform some tasks. But for now, I'm just clicking on just this add button, right? So if you notice, uh, add a new task, right? And then if you go here, I basically created a new class here, but if your application is having a uh, same flow for Android and iOS, then you could just name it as home screen. But in my case, I don't have a test app that works on both Android and iOS. So I'm just using uh, a separate class here, but yeah. And then I added a, uh, you know, a locator called add task uh, with, with mobile by dot accessibility ID. Again, guys, please prefer using uh, accessibility IDs if you if you see an accessibility IDs. Otherwise, go for class chain or iOS predicate and look for XPath only at the last, right? Because in iOS, XPaths can be a little flaky. So I would advise always prefer to use accessibility class chain uh, iOS predicate. You don't have to do a lot of things. Basically, when you use APM inspector to inspect them, uh, they will give you all these things. You just need to copy paste uh, in your code and then it should all automatically work. Again, you can also uh, see how we can create your own custom predicates, but it's predominantly easy. So you don't have to really worry about it. And and, and APM inspector is more than enough in most of the cases, right? Um, so this is the plus start circle I'm using here. But if you're using if Java client version less than eight, you're gonna see a mobile by. But if you're if you have APM Java client version more than eight point X, then you should replace this with APM by. Since I have less than, I cannot show it now. Um, if you are using greater than, use APM by. That's the only difference. But apart from that, I I I use just uh, a method uh, to get the instance instead of new iOS home screen. I I prefer having a method uh, which is much readable. And here, add a new task, and then I use page actions helper dot wait and click, and then I pass this. It will basically perform the click for me. Uh, you know, for now, I'm I haven't implemented the wait strategies. That is the reason I will cover what uh, you know this in a separate video. I have a very good implementation for how we can do the waiting for this elements, right? Um, finding the element and then I'm clicking on it, right? So that's that's very cool, right? Uh, if you have both the apps at the same place. Uh, create for one for Android, one for iOS, and then pass the Android as well. So pass Android and iOS, and you can have overloader method like this, and then you can find the which bias you want to use based on the platform. So you can write a logic with the driver manager dot instance of uh, Android driver, you use this iOS driver, you use uh, this locator. So you can do the customization here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much here. Uh, when I try to run the test, uh, basically it should work. I already have my APM server up and running. So, so basically it installs the app, opens the app, it basically clicks on that. And uh, yeah, this is, this is just a video to showcase how we can create the framework. So I haven't added assertions, but you guys, I have uh, added a lot of cool implementation on how to provide assertions. Uh, how to use, how to assert multiple things, right? If you if you haven't watched the previous videos, please do check them. So I will see you guys in another great video where I will cover um, how you can manage your Android and iOS. Here we have a separate test for iOS, separate test for Android, but we don't want to do that, right? So um, let's say if you go here, uh, test case, we have a separate Android test where we extend Android setup. We have iOS setup where we extend iOS setup, but how we can manage, uh, you know, both in one test case. Let's say the flow is same, then how would I manage it? And that's what we will be covering in the next video. See you guys. I will see you guys in another great video. Tadawada.